Ant and Leo's Excellent CES Adventures are brought to you by TWIT, home of the LastPass Studios. Securing every access point in your company doesn't have to be a challenge. LastPass unifies access and authentication to make securing your employees simple and secure. Check out lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. All right, day two, CS 2020. I had to come on over here to check out my folks at Canon because we've all seen the big news from the 1DX Mark III, mm, all of its goodness. And my man here is going to tell us just a little bit about it and let us know all of the nerdy techie specs because you know our Twit audience, we love those tech specs. There's a lot of specs. I don't think we have enough time to go through all the specs that we packed into this camera because there's a lot. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, what what is the price point? Because that's, that's what everybody wants to know right off the bat. Price point is $64.99. $64.99. So, so this is aimed squarely at your pro photographer. This is a pro product. This right. is going after those agency photographers, those sports uh, action photographers, those guys that are, I guess, that are taking out and putting it in a market that's going to beat us not out of it, really. This right. is going to live through just about anything. Right, know, right. So tell me a little bit more about it. So what we have, uh, it, it's the same uh, weight and feel, sorry, same size and shape and everything we're used to a 1DX. Yep. 90 grams lighter, so it is a little just lighter. Just a little bit lighter. It is using the same exact battery as the previous version, yep. but we're getting almost 3,000 shots per battery now. Nice. Um, the biggest thing about this, though, is the autofocus system. We have really redone the autofocus system from the ground up. Okay. Um, it's using a new area sensor array for autofocus. What that means is the AF sensor itself, what right. sees the subject to focus, right. is 28 times higher resolution at the center than what it has been in the past. Now, all the focus points is across the sensor, or is it? So you've got 191 AF points that there you're looking go. at the same area of the 1DX Mark II, but you've right. got 191 of those points. 155 are cross types. I mean, they're really sensitive for low light. Yeah, right. Functions. Good. To select those points, I'm going to flip this camera around for you. Okay. There's a new touch sensitive AF on button, so I'm just going to ride my finger across here, and you can now very quickly move very your quickly. finger and choose those AF points. Previously, we had the quick, the, the multi-function. Uh, we can still use that jo the, the joystick, as most people joystick, call it. Yeah. But it's much faster to just choose yeah, faster. that across. Very nice. Oh, so now, if you're nice. in live view, oh, so taking in the video cool. mode, like you've got a uh, 90 by 100 percent of Dude, the sensor now. area yes. for autofocus now. So yeah. nearly 100 percent coverage Almost. of the sensor itself yeah. for autofocus because so we're using dual pixel CMOS right AF. Mm -hmm. nice. So very good. All right. So now. Now, again, this is how much? About 64 $64.99. $64 this is the new hotness 1DX Mark III here from Canon. So now let's go ahead and check out some more awesome goodness that you got. I believe something along the lines of live streaming. Okay, so now we're in this amazing gaming cave. Woo, what's Canon known about gaming now? What, right. what is this? What Who is this? ever thought we would be in gaming, right? Seriously. So, so, so what we have in here? What we have. Our customers asked us for a lower end product line with a clean HDMI signal out. Okay. So they want us to set their M200 or something along that line to do their streaming so that they could actually live stream the game. Right. But they want to use the camera better than a typical webcam. So we gave them the M200 with the clean HDMI out. So M200, clean HDMI out, you're getting a larger sensor. I guess you get an APS-C APS sensor on this one, right? So 24 million okay. pixels. M-series lenses, so you can control your depth of field. You can control the exposure, oh, the ISO. Nice glass. You've got all of that capabilities. You can even adapt an, uh, an EF lens on there if you want something like a 1.2 aperture. Right. You've got those capabilities with an M-series. Outstanding. And at 499, it's a really easy camera to not only mount for your streaming, mm -hmm. But maybe you pick that up and now you go do your blog. Cool. Maybe you go outside and do a, a family shoot, whatever you might be doing. It's right. a very versatile camera. And now we're able to bring it into their studio and do a, a live stream with that. So we can shoot 4K 24p? Uh, we are actually outputting 4K uh, 30 right now 30? onto uh, uh, onto the display. Beautiful. So we can take this off of our gaming rig if we feel like it and go out and continue to vlog. All at a nice price and point of $4.99. $4.99. $4.99. With the lens. So here we are at the Central Hall. This is the TV area. Scott Wilkinson is going to give us a tour 
of all the audio and video stuff these guys mostly have. video mostly video this is, this is the tv area as you say and there's a lot of cool tv news and i have to say the last time i was here was all about 4k this year it's all, all about, about 8K. 8k 8k we're at the lg booth of course you know i love my lg oled i yeah, have yeah. the series so just go ahead and i have one from 2016 i think it's really old but still good still looks great yeah let's sure. go over here i want to look at the oled 8k 8k a hundred million live lights it says i don't even know what that means that the pixels which is shooting at 1080p you're watching 720p you're not seeing 8k but it really does yeah. look great oh yeah it's not and it's the hdr but it's also the high uh, the number of pixels right yes i mean if we're if we're this close the number of pixels means something but you're not going to watch tv this close right. right so the real advantage of 8k is the smoothness the naturalness uh, you can't see the individual pixels or or even as much detail as it can show you but it, if it up converts lower resolution 4k 1080p that's going to look a whole lot better native 8k content we're not going to have much of for a long time that's what always gets me about these demos is they shoot special content special, yes and they always you know they got a tiger and you can see the fur yes exactly the eyes and the seat yep. jump out yep. at yep. Exactly. but that's not the kind of thing you watch at home no here's no. a ball game i mean that's the kind of thing you might watch at home uh, sure sure and now youtube is offering some 8k content yeah but it's streamed over youtube correct at a very high compression, compression ratio correct yeah. so are we at the same day. stage with 8k that we were in the first couple of years of 4K is it kind of? Is it I don't think so because I don't think we're going to get native 8K as quickly as we got native 4K. It's a content. lot of data. It's an thing. awful lot of data. Well, as you see up here, a hundred million live lights. Now, what that really means is a hundred million sub pixels, red, green, blue, and white. In this case, the actual number of full color pixels is 33 million. But still, it's a lot of bandwidth. A lot of, a lot of bandwidth. Data. In fact, they're upgrading the HDMI spec to accommodate it. To Correct. One yep. uh, broadcasters aren't doing it. I mean, they got to 4K. I doubt they're going to barely. Yeah, <laughs> barely trade in all that new stuff for an 8K. Right. Uh, right. Content creators, and, if, and most content now is streamed. Right. There's a Blu-ray spec. Is there a coming Ultra UHD spec? Well, there is an Ultra UHD Blu-ray at 4K, but there's no. I don't think there's ever going to be an 8K disc. So it's all going to be on streaming. We are at a weird inflection point. It isn't Correct. quite like 4K. Correct. It yeah. isn't quite like 4K. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Not to mention the difficulty editing it. I mean, Apple has yes, a exactly. $25,000 computer <laughs> just to edit 8K video. Right. It, is a compli right. it is a lot of data. Right. Uh, but again, I mean, when we first started shooting 1080p, which we're shooting now, the workflow 15 years ago was undoable. It took Alex Lindsay a week right. to render a five-minute right. video. <laughs> so things move along. Things do move along. And in terms of compression, we're going to go over to the ATSC booth where they're showing ATSC 3.0. The That's next the new broadcast new broadcast broadcast standard and which includes some streaming they're streaming in 4k at 4 megabits per second what used to take in the older compression scheme 12 megabits is that h.265 correct well, yep. let's go look at that all right so i keep hearing about micro led what right. we just saw was OLED. oled there's nano cell which is traditional lcd traditional lcd tv with a special a quantum dot sort of layer that helps a variety of things. And they also have 8K for that. They do. They this do. is a prototype. This is not something LG is selling yet. Correct. This is, now, what? This is not micro LED. This is mini. Mini LED. What's mini LED? <laughs> okay. First of all, micro LED is tiny little L LEDs. They're that, direct view. They're direct view. They emit light. You see that light directly, and that's it. They're and red, they green, and blue. Correct. Mini LED is another form of an LCD backlight. Okay, so there's a backlight behind this panel of LCD pixels that's shooting light through it. But instead of a conventional LED where you might have uh, hundreds or maybe a thousand LEDs behind here and you might have a hundred or two hundred zones of dimming, with mini LED you have tens of thousands of LEDs behind and thousands of dimming zones. So this is false, but false to the false. tenth degree. The yes, tenth yes, degree. the next generation yeah. of false. They say 4,000 nit brightness, they say uh, deeper blacks, so yes. it is a high contrast. Right, because the LEDs behind, like normal LED backlights, can be dimmed and even turned off, so you get very deep blacks. 
the big advantage here is the number of zones. Right. So if you have a star in a black, in the black of space, if you have a normal LED, there might be a halo around right. it, right? Because the LEDs can't just one it's dim one at a time, right? Here you can, so you get much less haloing. You can actually see that on some droplets of water. Exactly. Now I have to say, side by side, we've got OLED 8K, we've got LED, LCD, NanoCell 8K, uh -huh. and we've got this micro LED or mini LED Million. 8K. Yeah. To me, there's no question that OLED is by far the best. Of the three. It is to me too. Okay. It isn't as bright though. Not nearly as bright. It, that OLED is probably it's less than a thousand nits. You're right. This, this is four thousand nits. Yeah. Yeah. And some content is actually mastered in to 4,000 nit peak brightness. So a TV like this would have an advantage when watching that content. If you're watching J.J. Abrams movies, you watch it on the Correct. mini LED. <laughs> I have to say, the, the darkness of the OLED, maybe because I'm used to it, feels yeah. more natural to I me. agree with you It completely. feels like the real world. Yep. Yep. This feels way too bright. And it's great for the showroom floor. Yeah, yeah. Now I want to see Mike, they have micro LED They have micro LED too. Right, let's too. go look at that. Cool. This is interesting. In the micro LED, they've actually darkened this. They've got curtains. Which I have, dark I'm not quite sure why that is because micro LED is the brightest of them all. It looks fantastic. Oh, it's amazing. Now, one of the advantages of micro LED, because they're direct view, you can piece them together, right? It's, the, it's, it's assembled in tiles. The tiles are maybe roughly a foot square, and you just put as many together as you want. Wow. So you could make this 200 inches. Absolutely. And it wouldn't even matter if you could get it in the door because you bring the tiles in. Exactly. How big are the tiles? Are they roughly a foot? A foot square? Roughly. Look at that. Yeah. It's now, amazing. how about the refresh rate on this? Is it fast? Very fast. So it's better than LCD in that yes. regard. There's no shuttering. You're looking directly Correct. at these LEDs. Correct. And the LEDs can be brightened and dimmed almost instantaneously. So it's the fast response time of a CRT almost. Correct. Almost. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. This is a movie. This is better than a movie theater. Yeah, exactly. There's one of these in a commercial movie theater in Los Angeles by Samsung. We'll see the Samsung one later. That so this, what we're looking at is 145 inches. But again, the size on micro LEDs is completely arbitrary. You, you make it bigger or smaller. That's right. Uh, and the size de determines the, uh, the resolution as well. This is probably 4K. God, do you have an eye for <laughs> I have to say though, boy does that look good. Boy does good. that look good, man. I wouldn't see, I mean, as good as OLED, right? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. As deep black as does OLED. Does it have any of the issues OLED has with over time, the fading nope. of dyes or anything? So this is a new technology that ultimately probably is going to replace them. Yes. Pricey exactly. right now. Oh, super expensive. The Sony version of this is like a million bucks. Oh. <laughs> okay, we're leaving now. <laughs> I don't know how much this one is. Most companies are not at, uh, They're announcing. not selling these. They're not selling. This They're is, not announcing prices. As with a lot of what you see at CES. Exactly. This is a demo. Exactly. Someday. Yes. Maybe. Technology demo. A concept piece. But it does make you drool. It makes you want it, doesn't Oh, it? yeah. Oh, yeah. Now over at Samsung, they've got one that's 230 some inches, 8K. Wow. 8K. So well, we'll let's see go look later. at that too. All right, <laughs> we're at the LG booth. Anything else to see? Oh, I want to see that gaming monitor. Oh, the, you want to see the gaming monitor? Let's that's go. pretty cool. So if you're a gamer, I know with laptops, you're starting to get OLED screens. How about on a desktop? How about a giant, what is this, 40? This is 48 inches. 40? This, this, this is, is a TV, really. It's a crossover piece sure. okay. between between being a TV and a, and a monitor. But it's OLED? It's OLED. It's uh, like most of the OLEDs from LG. It's uh, Yeah, let's go ahead here. It's uh, variable frame rate. It's com it's certified in, in, in NVIDIA G-Sync. So the NVIDIA cards have their own proprietary technology, and you can, in the game, either set it for a frame rate, but you can give, uh, maybe even in the game, it will change during, in the middle of the game. It will change in the middle of the game, whether there's a lot of action or whether there's sense. not, because yeah. if you don't do that, then you get what's called tearing right. sometimes and other artifacts that aren't really nice. Yeah. Super fast response time, and the other really cool thing about this monitor is the pixel pitch, the density of the pixels is very high. It's 100 pixels per inch. I can't see any pixels. I can't see any pixels. I mean, I'm right on next to it. Yeah. And, and honestly, gamers are going to be pretty close. I mean, yes, and the optimum viewing distance is three feet. You're going to be right here. Right here. So you've you got your PC, you're playing the game. Exactly. It's darkened when it needs to be, but the movement is crystal clear. There's no tearing, no breakups, no uh, blocking, macro blocking. This is the same pixel 
pitch, 100, roughly 100 PPI, as the 8K 88-inch TV. So they've taken that and shrunk it, the, the pixels density down to a 48-inch size. Holy cow, look at the specular highlight. Yeah, look at that. that yeah, exactly right. Look at the dot there. Oh my God, that's incredible. How much? What is that? I want it now, Mike. Oh, that's uh, like a crosshair. That's I, a crosshair. Oh, that's a crosshair. No, okay. but I have seen three of these. Oh. Yeah. Oh, 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 no, it's uh, my triggers. triggers. Uh, trigger, yeah. Too late. This is, <laughs> is it for sale? Uh, this comes out in the first half of this year. Do we have a price? Uh, I, I work in video. I can't really comment ah. on that, but if I were to guess, oh, Little Port, nice to meet you. I'm nice sorry. To see you, Mike. <laughs> if you were to guess, Mike, now that you know it's me, well, again, speaking from NVIDIA, I, I would say it's be comparable to what you see on the current market. Like, That's not bad. That, yeah, we're, I, we're talking about a thousand maybe for something of this size, a little bit. For little this bit size, I, it's hard to say because this is their first time this going. It's on a 43 inch for a thousand right now. 48 inch. Right no, now. I'm this saying is, a 43, 43 inch, inch gaming monitor would be, be in the thousand, thousand buck range. range. I think uh, HP has one right now. Okay. So, yeah, maybe twice that because it's, it's amazing, and right? It's OLED and it's amazing, yeah. And you watch TV on it. That's right. Right. Put that in your dorm room and you, you're set. <laughs> Go ducks. <laughs> well, beavers. Wrong one. Beavers. beavers. <laughs> Got to get the right animal. So important. Hey, anyway, this is an, this is this is an important uh, important piece. Well, I think this is the best monitor I've ever seen for gaming. I mean, it's an OLED. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. Part of their CX series, which includes uh, sizes up to 75 or 77 inch at least. So all of LG's 2020 models have G-Sync and variable refresh rate support. So, so game on any of them. What do you do in video? So I do GeForce technical marketing. Nice. So uh, I've, I've had the fortunate, the, been fortunate enough to work with uh, Shroud when he was still at PC Perspective yeah. and working with different press and reviewers and then working on our products internally and coming to shows and talking to folks like you guys. Nice. So. Well, Marcus Bradley just went that way. Go get him. <laughs> no, they're, they're, there's the stars. All right. Scott, thank, thank you for taking the time. Thank you, Mike. We thank appreciate so it. That's LG. Where do we go next? Hey, look who I ran into from hey. Le Plein Ecran. Yeah. Did I get it right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On French TV 24. It's LCI. It's LCI. LCI. It's oh, and TF1, the, the, you TF1. know. TF1. I like the big one. It's great yeah. to see you. Good to see you. You having fun at, uh, at CES? Fun is a is a is a very generous way of putting things. <laughs> I mean, see, you know, when you go to CES, people are like, "Oh, you're going to Vegas? How lucky I'm of you!" Like, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. because you haven't been. Yeah, um, but I think that so one of the reasons we do this, best, but and one of the reasons you do it, is because you want to bring this never the same interesting trip. show to somebody else. Right? And you're you're always fearful of just missing out on something like this. This was this is wild. This was a total surprise. This is wild. So look at us. Uh, we're real. People. We're real. See the bags under our eyes. There is value in being the, real. <laughs> the exhaustion. These people look real. They're AI generated. Yes. They're and not. Re this is not a real person at all. And they are real time. This so is, this, this is, is not like video game. I you could know, converse with them. Yeah. You could. Not um, right now. For now, I think the, the the way they look is is mostly what they worked on, and, and it's very. Realistic. It's, it's uncanny. It's terribly realistic. But it's un it's not uncanny valley, which is the kind of no, amazing no, no, no. thing. It's so well done. That yes. I didn't know that they were. Real no, people. look. This is this is like news correspondent. Yeah. Yeah. So neon. It's interesting. We were just talking to somebody from neon, who was funded by Samsung, but Samsung didn't know what they were up to until they showed the product. So they, it means that. For a company like Samsung to have like moonshot little projects that they fund, it's interesting because the head of research in California is actually a French guy that I know and love dearly, Luke Julia, who was the father of Siri and things like that. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and he just put out a book that says artificial intelligence does not exist. Yes. Um, I don't think he'll change his mind seeing this because what they're really trying to do is do these like ultra realistic avatars. This is more like deep fakes. Yes. So where AI gets involved is in creating the models yes. using big training Look sets. Better. But after that's done, this is all kind of just runs. Sure. In, yeah, with that. In fact, she's not responding to us or anything. She's no. living her own. But if you give her a script, she'll read it. Wow. Yeah. Does it worry? Because you work, we should argue. Well, I, I wouldn't say worry, but it's interesting to know that in, in the very near future, because these, these are things that we were talking about, like, you know, two, five, ten years down the line, no, this is now. We walked in and this here is it now. is. 
I saw this. I knew there was something going on, but yeah. I couldn't quite figure it out. At the other end of the booth, you have this like um, Chinese-looking university professor, and you can totally imagine him being in like you know a MOOC, a YouTube video teaching you about econometrics. Um, and you won't even think twice about is he real? Is he not? It doesn't really matter. We've gone right through the uncanny yeah. valley to reality. I mean, that she looks real. The plan here is to use them for like customer service. Um, and you have to think of really uh, interesting models. If, you, if, you're, if you're in advertising, how wonderful is it to have a virtual spokesperson? That you, they can do whatever in, in however many languages you want, and you don't have to pay them residuals ever. There are a lot of real life spokespersons on this floor. Yes. <laughs> Cedric Ingren from TFI, LCI, TF1, LCI, Boulogne, France, Lenny uh -huh. Everybody watch. All right. See you All soon. right. Hey, nice Cheers. to see you. Good Thank to see you. you. So one thing that's happened in the TV world, it started, you know, of course, American TVs, then Japan with Pioneer and Sony, uh, Toshiba, yep. and then Sharp. And Sharp. And then South Korea took over. Right. With LG, LG and Samsung. And I think what happened is that the Chinese TV manufacturers said, now is our turn. Yep. And slowly, since I've been here over the last eight years, you've seen bigger and bigger booths, more and more presence from China. Right. This is Hisense's booth. Right. They're one of the three big Chinese companies. Hisense and TCL, we know. We and know. you mentioned Konka. Konka used to be what's called an OEM, original equipment manufacturer. They make the TV, somebody else Somebody would else would put a brand on them. Yeah. Now they're coming into the U.S. market all on their own. And they've got some very impressive stuff. We're gonna go over there in a minute. So I'm pretty familiar with the Hisense. We have had that laser TV, the, the short throw projection. Ultra TV. short throw projection. So my projector at home is yep. about eight inches from the screen, a yep. special the screen. box that sits there on the, on the floor. And on we love stand. it, it's 100 inches. Yeah. Ours has two lasers. They're now showing the three laser tri Three laser, right, which is red, green, and blue separate lasers, which gives you basically all the colors the eye can see. Oh, crap. Which now is amazing. Now you gotta buy a new TV. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's this. Yeah. This is a TV with a speaker behind the TV. A laser TV, so the same idea with a, an ultra short throw projector. Yeah, but the so screen is special. The screen, it has uh, speaker drivers essentially mounted behind the screen. So the screen becomes the speaker. So you mean the screen's vibrating yeah. in the way that a diaphragm yeah. and a speaker would yeah. vibrate? Yeah. Don't exactly. you notice that? No. You don't. If the if the Terminator gets to like blow some up, the screen doesn't go like this. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. Is it the, now? Is it Dolby? Is it a five one? Is it Atmos? It, it's, well, it, there are three channels in the front so in there the is screen. At least the center channel with left right. Correct. You yeah. might have surrounds that and, you would add. And in, in a fact, sub. in this demo, they have the same material as the screen, although not reflective, providing the surrounds and the overheads for Atmos. Wow. wow. So it's basically the screen consists of a a bunch of these little vibrators that are activated by six exciters, they're called, behind the screen, two in, two on the right, two in the middle, two on the left. Besides hiding the speakers, why would I want to do this? Well, it's because it's coming, the sound is coming directly from the screen. So when somebody's speaking, they're, they're they're, the sound is coming from, from them. As, as opposed to in a, most projection systems, you would have the speak the center speaker where most of the dialogue is right below. Here. Right, yeah. it's below. Yeah. Yeah. So it's okay, that works pretty well, but it's better if the sound can come directly right. from the screen. But you've heard this, is the sound good? I have, it sounds really good. Interesting. Really good. They've got this working down to like 40 hertz. You almost don't need a subwoofer. Wow. I mean, it would be happy. I would. You'd want to add a sub and add a surround. Sub. Right. But the center and left, right, coming right from where coming they should right be, from where they should where be the coming. Is. Exactly wow. right. It's very cool. Well, all right. So now I have to say, I walked by this with Lisa yesterday. Yeah. And you know, we love our uh, high sense laser. Yeah. But I said, and it's not going to happen right away, Lisa, but maybe in the next four or five years, we're going to go 8K. I and mean, look at this. Yeah. Everybody's doing 8K. It's just another 8K screen. But Everybody I have to is. say, these really come to life. I think it really gorgeous. does. It, it, even though you can't see the individual pixels or as much detail as you could represent here, it just looks more lifelike. Yeah. It really does. There's something going on. And of course, they always pick con source content that has lots of detail. Of course. The cities, I mean, that, yeah, shots. exactly right. I've been to Positano. I, I recognize actually a lot of these places. <laughs> and uh, it feels like you're there. In fact, yeah. for traveling, <clears throat> what a great way to travel. Now, what's unique about this TV? This it, TV has what's called 
dual modulation. So in an LCD TV, you've got a backlight and the light passes through little LCD shutters, okay, to, yeah. make, to, to make them brighter or dimmer. What this does is it puts an extra layer of LCD shutters in there so that when they both close down, it gets much darker, and much blacker. And that's what blacker. you're continually going for is this high dynamic range. In dark, LCD dark, TVs, dark. that's really hard, hard to do. do. Really yeah. hard. So it's OLEDs, it's simple. A double shutter to make Correct. it double dark. Correct. The, the extra shutter panel behind the actual LCD panel is 1080p, sometimes called 2K, but it gives you 2 million dimming zones. Wow. That's a lot. So that's a lot. It's yeah. more even than mini LED. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is another approach to making LCD TVs darker and darker still. It's an 8K TV, so it's got 33 million pixels. It's got 2 million pixels in the in the dimming layer, if you will, uh, which gets it deeper black, reduces that haloing I was talking about earlier. Uh, this is Hisense's uh, approach to the problem of how do you get deep blacks in LCD. So one thing that's happened that's kind of interesting is, uh, and I think this happened with the Korean manufacturers as well, is at first, you know, LG was Lucky Gold Star in the right. back of the drugstore. Right. They weren't known for quality, they were known for price. Right. But as they started to build brand, they started to get more and more innovative and in fact out innovated the Japanese manufacturers, generally speaking. Same thing with the Chinese companies. Yep. They started the low end, the inexpensive. It yep. sounds like Hisense is starting to really innovate technologically. Correct. However, their mainstream products, they have a, still less expensive. much less expensive. They've got a Roku line, they've got an Android line, and they've got their own operating system called Vita. And in each case, they're, they've gone with a good, better, best philosophy. Uh, in, in those particular lines. And they're almost all 4K at this point. Yeah. Uh, and they're all very inexpensive. So they are innovating. This XD or uh, dual layer technology, 8K, is, is all very advanced. But it's not going to be for another year or two before right. I can actually buy one. And it'll probably be on the relatively expensive get, side. So they're going to get to the more premium product. Exactly. Just like, just like Korea did. Just what happened. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. One other thing that I think we should be talking about when we're talking about 8K is upscaling. Because there isn't any 8K content Correct. out there. Virtually none. And all these companies are emphasizing, I know Hisense is saying we've got AI upscaling. They're emphasizing their ability to take 2K and 4K content and yep. make it look good on 8K. What Correct. do you think? Oh, I, it's it's a critical factor, and all of the companies, LG, Samsung, Sony, Hisense, TCL, Konka, all are doing this AI upscale. Okay. They're all doing it, and and basically it, it gives you a much better picture at a lower resolution when you upscale it to 8K, so that, you know, it's it looks fantastic. I wish we could see some 2K or 4K content. No, these, these demos TVs, are all going to be that. they're all going to be custom yeah. 8K content. But when you do go into the store, if you're looking at a 4K TV, you really want to look at how it handles HD Correct. and even SD. And even if SD. I Love Lucy looks terrible, <laughs> you're not going to watch exactly. I Love Lucy. Exactly. And everybody exactly. should be watching I Love Lucy. That's right. Uh, I, I exactly. couldn't agree more. And I think the same thing's going to happen with 8K. Is <laughs> yes. You may buy an 8K TV, but the, at least initially, the vast majority of content won't be 8K. So That's the upscaler right. is the thing it you really want to pay attention super important. To. That's yeah. correct. You really want to pay attention to All right. Where do we go next? Oh, we, we have to go see Konka. <laughs> One of these things is not like the other. Konka, we're on it. I'm going to bet, Scott Wilkinson, the first time our viewers at home have heard the word Konka, in any context at all, is yeah, right now. It's right here. But this is a name, a TV company you're going to be hearing a lot more from soon. That's right. They've been here for years at CES, but they've never established a presence in the U.S. market. They've made TVs for other companies. They've made TVs for the Chinese market. Now, this year, they've decided we want to come into the U.S. market big time. And boy, are they coming in big, big time. time. <laughs> These are both micro LED screens. You know, I don't know. You remember the Ray Brad? Bradbury story, The Velt. Yes. It's, yes. It's a house, but one of the rooms in the house is a Velt. Is an African Velt because it has a whole wall that's a screen. In fact, it might even, I don't remember, it might even be the might, whole The whole room. room. Yeah, exactly. It's like a holodeck. Yes. Yes. I can see this happening 
in the next five to ten years, these screens can be any arbitrary size. You start with one foot square tiles and just build them out to the size you want. Yep. This is the wall of a room. You could That's have right. all four walls if you could afford it. That's right. And in a completely immersive experience. That's right. This is 4K, that's 8K, same tiles. Same tiles, just how many did you put together? Exactly. And the image quality is, I think it's superb, right? Yeah. So it's direct view micro LED. Right, these are LEDs, tiny little microscopic LEDs, red, green, and blue, that are just emitting light directly, and that's what you're seeing. That's why they're so bright, there's 2,000 nits. 2,000 nits coming off the screen, and that's probably, even if you put a full screen white up. In most cases, like an OLED, if you, it, they may say, oh, we do 700 nits, but if you put a full screen white up, it's probably more like 300. You can't do it. You can't do it. These can. So 2,000 nits, 10 million to one contrast ratio. Now that's a manufacturer spec. I take that with a big grain of salt. Yeah, yeah. But still, it, they can go down to deep, deepest black off. This is HDR times 10. This is HDR. HDR. Uh, high full, dynamic range. Yeah, yeah. Full range. Though, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, black yeah. Oh, black. yeah. And so, and because it's so bright, I mean, they're, we're not in a darkened room. Some of these right. other uh, micro LEDs are being shown in special viewing areas. Right. We're out on the show floor That's and it right. pops. It pops totally. Totally. Oh, yeah, price unknown. This is a technology demo. Yeah. They're way over our, yeah, it's too expensive. Yeah. Millions in some cases. Probably. I yeah. mean, this 8K wall, probably in that range. Yeah. But as with everything, uh, the manufacturer gets easier, the prices go down. And I have a feeling this is going to happen pretty fast because this solves a lot of problems. People want big screens. Yes. But they can't get them in the door. <laughs> you know, I remember that Sharp, we were talking about the old Sharp 105 inch that I showed on live with Regis and Kelly. Right. It had to be moved in the, in the, in the hold of a 747 and you had to take the roof off of the house to bring it in unless yeah. you happen to have a loading dock in your house. Right, right. Or you build the house around the or TV. Or you build the house around the TV. <laughs> this can be brought in in little one foot squares and you yeah. assemble it on the wall. That's right. I have a feeling this is the future of television. It is absolutely the future of television. I think five to ten years, it'll, as with everything digital, right, the price starts high and comes down. And that, that's going to happen here. The What's problem is manufacturing. That's it's my question. What difficult. is the challenge? It's difficult to, to place these microscopic LEDs perfectly, and they have to be perfectly placed. And these little tiles have to be aligned perfectly so that you don't see any seams. So you can't assemble it yourself. It's no, not like no, uh, no. You uh, need to have a technician Legos. come out and do it. Okay. Yeah, it's not like, well, eventually, maybe someday. Maybe someday. But for now, it's not a simple thing to make the tiles, to place the LEDs perfectly, and it's not a simple thing to put them together and align them. But we are seeing the future Absolutely, of no television, question about it. and I have a feeling we're going to hear more from Hong Kong. Yes, and no question about it. Really They've also got mini LED that looks mighty good. Let's take okay, a look at that. Okay, let's look at mini LED. So, just to recap, we just looked at micro LED. What's mini LED? Mini LED is a backlight system for a traditional LCD TV. But so it's, it's just another kind of LCD. It's another kind of LCD. It's really the backlight. The light shines through the LCD panel. And instead of maybe a thousand LEDs and a hundred dimming zones, this mint fall. We that's always fall. talk about how good fall is. Full array, local, local dimming. dimming. Far better than edge lit. Right. And most of the new TVs are all going fall. fall. Yeah, okay. edge lit, edge lighting is kind of disappearing, which good. I'm really glad. Oh, good, yeah. So this takes... This the, is fall times 10. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We have 40,000 LEDs behind here. Wow. The, thus, they're called mini LEDs, because they're smaller than regular LEDs. But not as white, small as micro. Are they all white light? Uh, yes, they are all so white light. So they're the light. backlight. Right. As with LCD technology, you have shutters, and shutters and colors. color filters. And filters, okay. right? So we still have shut LCD shutters. We still have color filters, red, green, and blue. But instead of a thousand LEDs and a hundred dimming zones, we have forty thousand LEDs and ten thousand dimming. And zones. what's the benefit? Why do we do that? Because with so with a few dimming zones, if you have a bright thing on a dark background that's smaller than a dimming zone, yeah. that dimming zone still has to brighten up in order for that bright little object to be bright. But then the background, the dark background, gets brighter as well, right. cause what's called a halo. Right. And so with 10,000 dimming zones, you could have little individual little stars on a space background, and you wouldn't see halos around. Perfect. So it's Perfect. really, Pinpoint really nice. Light. You get a much, you get even better blacks, yeah. uh, brighter colors. I don't know if this one uses quantum dots. We're going to see some quantum dots a little later, uh, where the and those have to do with the color. 
how the how how wide the color gamut is, how many color. I have to say, you know, I mean, just from a pure aesthetic point of view, this looks great. It looks great. It's it fantastic. looks, you know, as good as the micro LED. I know it isn't the same technology at all, but Not it looks pretty same, good. This is 8K. This is 8K mini at, LED. at uh, I think it's a 65 inch. This is Konka again. Now, there's some CES lore here because. Yeah. This used to be, this corner used to be the Intel corner. Intel corner. And across used to be the Microsoft booth. Right. I remember when TCL, was it TCL, took over the Microsoft booth yep. and we went, this was 10 years ago. Yeah. Microsoft stopped coming. Yeah. TCL, we yeah. said, what's TCL? It's TCL. So now, this is the Intel booth. Conca is here. And I think... TCL is back TCL in the back main TCL is back there. Kaka's got both Microsoft and Intel now. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if that's tea leaves, but I think you can read into this There's, what's happening as a trend in yeah, the industry. Yeah. Uh, these companies are moving in. Seriously, seriously. Now, in addition to the micro LED and the mini LED, Konka is also bringing in more traditional OLED TVs and more traditional LCD TVs. This is good news because LG kind of owned OLED for a long time. Now, Sony, well, Sony's done a lot of OLED for a long but time. But they, they source their panels from LG. Everybody does. LG made them all. Does Konka make their own? No, I don't think so. I so don't know that for a fact. We'll find out. But we'll LG sounds out. like LG still kind of owns this. I company. suspect they, LG Display is separate from LG Electronics. LG Electronics makes the TVs that you buy. But the displays go. The display, the, the raw panel comes from LG Display, and I suspect that Konka, I know that uh, TCL, I know that uh, Sony, all those TVs, all those OLEDs come from LG Display. That's one thing that I imagine these companies are excited about micro LED is that no one owns micro LED. Correct. They That's can all make micro LED. Correct. If they can get the technology down to place those LEDs perfectly. If they can improve the process. Exactly. All right. We're done with Konka? Yep. We're done with Konka. I think we need to go to TCL next. Speaking of TCL. They're just across the way. Here we go. So I bought my mom a TCL because it was cheap, right? It had Roku built in. Yep. I know it wasn't the greatest quality. She's 86. Oh. I don't think she was worried about it. But TCL's also come a long way. And I would say for the money, it's really good quality. It's as good as Vizio and, and that's certainly in that, in that range. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're in front of a couple of, <laughs> talk about acronym uh, mishmash. Yeah, yeah. Acronym mashups. We've yeah. got a QLED. Mini LED. QLED Mini LED. 8K. So this is Mini LED like we've seen before with a... Uh, 25,000 LEDs behind the screen. And just to reiterate, in case everybody didn't watch the whole thing, yeah. that's a LCD style technology with local dimming that is 40,000 points behind. Well, actually 25,000 25, in this case, but points. yes, tens of thousands behind. Fall, full array local dimming, so each, and there are many more dimming zones than in a traditional TV, so you get uh, better resolution of brightness and darkness on the screen. Now, the thing that might be interesting to people uh, is this is available now, right? Uh, it will be. The 6 Series, <coughs> pardon me, the 6 Series had mini LED uh, and it, it's available now. Yeah. This is the 8 Series, eight series. which will be available, I think, second half. Okay. Uh, and again, at a very, very reasonable price. In this case, we have quantum dots. Because notice the, the acronym I thought, QLED. I thought that was a Samsung. It was, but for some reason, Samsung decided not to make it exclusive. So it's the same technology? Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly right. And the other distinguishing factor here is that the mini LEDs are deposited directly into the glass of this panel. So there's less distance between them and the actual LCD uh, shutters and, and, and imaging panel. That means less bleed, less halo Correct. effect, more, Correct. more precise. Correct. Exactly right. And and, uh, and also probably this is to be fairly inexpensive. Probably so. Now the eight series is their top of the line. Yeah. So it'll be the most expensive from TCL, but it's still going to be a heck of a lot less than that it is from say Samsung or whatever. I've seen they've won a lot of They've awards won a bunch of ones, awards. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that it, and it uses quantum dots, which gives you a wider range of colors, and okay. you can see that in this demo material That's why here. They're showing all of course, colors. they're actually showing uh, pictures of quantum dot material <laughs> using quantum dots to display it. It's <laughs> Ouroboros. Now let's turn around because we've got a cinema wall here, 132 inch. Now this is. Micro, micro LED, LED, not mini LED, and that's going to really confuse people for a long time. Right. But this is those snap together panels. Right. Which with LEDs that are super tiny, that are emitting light, and that's what we're seeing directly. Are I feel red, like green, I can blue. see pixels on this one. Well, it, this is only 4K. Oh. 
<laughs> oh, who wants 4K? And, <laughs> and at this 4K. distance, at this distance, you can, you can see the pixels. If you were sitting in your couch, you, you wouldn't see it. Yeah, I mean, if we even if we stood back in the yeah. a little farther yeah. back, we're we right see next it. to it though, and I can't yeah. see the pixels. Exactly. But that's 4K and 8K. Literally, on uh, any of the AK sets we've seen, even the giant AK sets we were just next to at Conca, yeah. you couldn't see you, any pixels. No, at this distance, you put your nose up against you it, you cannot, couldn't see I've it. I've been trying to do that. Yeah. They yeah. keep saying, get your nose off our screen, Laporte. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. So this is there. And you can, in the black, you can see the seams you between can. the panels, just barely. Yeah. But with, with real content, you can't really see it. That's kind of interesting, too. Yeah. Is that something they'll fix over time, or is that just in the nature of micro LED? It's the nature of micro LED. Because there are panels. They are separate side. panels. Like, and so yeah. part of the cost, as I mentioned before, is having an engineer technician come out just and align right. them perfectly. Yeah. You want to minimize the right. visibility yeah, of those. Yeah, even with some of the light uh, content, Again. I can still see seams. Again, I up this close. Where, yeah, you can see where the panels are. I bet you, uh, Anne, if you get close in on this, you can see... You know, definitely see some lines, especially where it's bright. Look where right, it's white. Right, right, yep. right, right around here. Solid color. You can see. So that's something to be aware of. Uh, yeah, may get better. Oh, maybe. it will get better, yeah. undoubtedly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. again, we're in the very early stages. This is, as you said before, this is the future of TV. I feel like it is. It really it's is going to replace OLED. It's going to replace LCD. It's no point. question. It's direct view. Yep. It's bright. This particular one is fifteen hundred nits. Feels pretty bright though. Oh, very. Two th two point two and a half million to one contrast ratio. So. Yep. Uh, again, those are made up numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it looks pretty good. I think it looks really. Oh good. yeah, and yeah. if we stood back a little farther, yeah, it would look even yeah. better. It certainly catches the eyes. So they, it's, TCL is also using the term QLED because they're really big into quantum dots. Okay, that's another thing that's going to be more and more common. In Only TVs. on LCD style TVs. Correct. Though, like well, the, you know, now, yes. Yeah. Eventually, you could make an OLED with quantum dot filters, oh, which would make them actually brighter than they are now. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so there is a future for quantum dots beyond what where they're currently being used in LCD TVs. Right. Right. But right now, and for the next couple of years at least, they're going to be just in LCD TVs as they are now. And there's been a battle about who has the biggest screen. Yes. And I remember there was a 95 inch screen, and then two days later somebody said, Oh, well, we have a hundred inch, hundred five. Panasonic 102. You remember sharp, that? Uh, it was like one inch. Five. We're a little bit. So this is the biggest screen at CES. As far as I know. How big is this? 292 inches diagonal. This is huge! This is Samsung's micro LED. Micro LED is, called the wall. The wall. What's amazing is it's one signal. It's not a bunch of screens we've seen that before put together. Right, right, right. It's huh. one signal to one big screen. 8K in this case. So that also shows you how much resolution it has. Because normally when you blow something up, the dots become bigger and bigger. And bigger. It, it gets softer. This is spectacular. Yeah. This feels like you're here. When that elephant was coming at us, I wanted to run. And there's no bezel around the screen. There's it's, it's, frameless. it's frameless. It's just there. You, as you say, you could build your wall out of this. This is stunning. Yeah. Yeah. I think sharp and everybody else has just said okay you win oh wait you win <laughs> <laughs> you win samsung yeah. you got it That's look at that look at that we are i mean i feel like uh this could be a close encounter to the third kind yeah yeah <laughs> wow this and that was cool right there they have a they have a mode where you have a tv screen on a wall around uh, you know with, it's with all a, a screen it's all the screen it's all an image this is the future of home theater this is no doubt about it it's more than home theater it's totally immersive yeah. So what else? Let's go see, Let's some, go see some other stuff. Samsung stuff. So it's funny because at this point, micro LED, mini LED, 8K, HDMI 2.1, quantum dots, everybody's got the same kind of stuff. That's true. Um, we haven't talked about 5G. Is 5G involved in this? We're at the oh, Samsung. Oh, absolutely. Booth. You're yeah. in the Samsung booth and 5G is involved. 
Uh, it, it may very well become another way of delivering content to your TV. Instead of terrestrial yeah. broadcast, streaming through or terrestrial you, Right, or even uh, streaming over your network, right. your it'll, local area it'll, network. It'll you just get it wireless, yeah. wireless from, from 5G in your city. And that's what they're talking about over here, the new era, to some next degree, era yes. video And they're also talking about uh, improved... Uh, codex compression H.265 AV1 what's AV1 AV1 is a is a codec for streaming 8k from YouTube (laughs) oh so it's a Google that's a Google codec yeah yeah exactly yeah and they're showing over there I thought this was kind of interesting a universal program guide that will tell you where you can find stuff on any uh, OTT or OTA platform. That's the biggest complaint we all have. That's you right. You don't know where your show is. Exactly. And nobody cares. They know about their show. They don't care what network made it or where right, it is. Right, right. Just where do I go to, to get it? Put it on the screen. Put it on the yeah. screen for me. And then yeah. that Samsung's working on that. If they can too. solve that, that'd be huge. That would be huge. Yeah. Exactly right. All right. So we so, got. And we got ATSC 3.0 tuners in some of these TVs as well. Okay. This is Samsung is, is more of an incremental improvement right. I, story, I think. Which is good, you know. Their AI processor is really good. Again, we were quantum AI. Quantum AI. Was talking about upscaling. Right. Talking about uh, t- taking lower content, lower resolution content up to 8K. It does a really good job of that. The days of one company having a massive advantage over the other is really kind of over. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the technologies are not proprietary. They're widely known. And everybody's they're, they're great. I mean, every time I see an 8K screen, I'm saying, I got to have Got to have that Especially one. micro LED. I think that's going to transfer. That transition. is where, it, where, it's, where it's all going. But again, it's going to be very expensive for a while. Yeah. Uh, and if you want something 8K, looks really good, not that expensive, there are plenty of other options. We've been trying to simulate for your benefit the death march that is CES. <laughs> one more stop. We're at the Sony booth finally. This is it's funny, Sony puts their booth way in the way back. Way in the back. It's the longest walk, but it's kind of a destination, right? It is, it really is. They've been in the same location for many, many years. Everybody knows. Come to the back of the center hall and That's you can right. see what's new from Sony. And it's Sony. huge. It's a huge booth. So what is new from Sony? Anything? Well, yeah, they've got a couple of 2020 models models of TVs. Are right? they doing Bravia's? What is their... Well, that's their branding name, okay. yeah. They've got an LCD, they've got an OLED, uh, the next generation with the next generation processor. Now, I remember on the last shootout, the old Sony OLEDs won, right? That's right. So they do make a very good OLED. Oh, no doubt. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Do they also have micro LED, mini LED, They QLED? don't have mini LED. They don't. And they don't have QLED. No. They're more traditionalist. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they even have any 8K. I, I think it's all 4K. Interesting. But they do have sound. They surprising. do. Now, Sony, of course, is everything from a production studio, from a movie studio, all the way to the end result. Right. Um, so one of the things that they concentrate on is sound. And one of the interesting things here at the show is something called 360 Reality Audio, which is basically, it, I tried it out last night. You take your cell phone. You take a picture of your ears. What? It modifies the the to match the your audio ear to mit, to match the profile of your ear. Wow! And gives you a sense of the sound coming from outside your head. That's very interesting. Which Actually, we've cool. we've seen this is not the first device I've heard of that does that. Correct. Um, but still, but interesting. it's cool. Yeah, it's and it sounds cool. good. Yeah, it really does. So the sound comes from out there. It comes from outside. Yeah, yeah JVC is actually showing something like that over in North Hall as well. So okay. there's a couple. And these of are for these for headphones. For headphones, right. correct. Exactly. So we can't really show you what those would sound like. <laughs> no. no. But then we also have. They're showing a 15-inch, what they're calling a light field display. Now, light field displays are a type of 3D display without glasses. It's the next generation of glasses-free 3D. 3D. And you know how skeptical I am. I've seen this again and again and again and never did anything for me. Right. Um, But I'm willing to be open-minded. This this might be something that you... The technology is really interesting. It is. Light field technology is very interesting. It takes a bunch of little tiny projectors and shoots the light out in all kinds of different directions. So it's direct view. You're not looking at a projection. Correct. It's, sh- it's shining a light Correct. in your eyes. I have to say, when I compare this, and I understand the whole idea is to make you feel like you're looking at something that really exists in space. Right. It, it looks like other 3D video, where it looks like a 2D screen with 3D volumetric information. Honestly, 
reach HDR, 4K, or 8K, to me feels more realistic. I know my head, my brain knows I'm looking at a screen. Right. It knows it's not looking at something in space. Right. So even with kind of a willful suspension of disbelief, yeah. I, I don't feel like this is in any way better than just a great screen with great color and, and great vividness. I agree. I don't think it's here. I don't think it's... You know, it's interesting. Fully. I think it's, it's technology that's very interesting. Exactly. It's actually seeing my eyes, and so it's projecting into my eyes in three dimensions. But I, right. If you get a chance to see it, I'd love to know what you think of it. From my point of view, a great TV is going to do a lot better job, and you don't have to make special content that comes at you. <laughs> it just there's no point. <laughs> right, 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 right. So actually, part of what's fun about the Sony booth is the booth itself. It's a beautiful presentation. Sony did make one of the few surprise announcements of CES by announcing an electric vehicle, self-driving yeah. car, which I don't think Sony ever intends to make. That's not their business, but right. it's to demonstrate Sony technologies with sensors and cameras and, and technology. And the, the dashboard is all OLED yeah. or, you know. Yeah. It's a, a technology demo, not right. a product. But right. you can see it's getting a lot of attention. Yeah. And it was one of the few things that happened at CES that we didn't know about ahead of time. Right. Also the neon, the, those that artificial humans. Artificial humans. We didn't know about that till we got here either. Actually, well, I've been artificial for 10 years now. <laughs> Scott Wilkinson is our home theater guru. He is at techhive.com. And you can see he is the guy to go to when you want to know what's the latest in television. I can't thank you enough. My pleasure. For uh, your NTSC video. Oh, uh, yes. Your Simpty, Simpty uh, t color card <laughs> and the time you spent because really it, it makes so much more sense when you put it all in context. Thank you, Scott. My Let's pleasure. See. Thank yeah. you. I hope you've enjoyed our TV tour of CES. Lots more still to come from Las Vegas CES 2020. So, Mark, we're here at the LG booth with <laughs> you're growing herbs. Yes, we are. Is this a refrigerator or a garden? It's actually a combination of both. So we took our refrigeration technology and actually enhanced the overall experience for consumer to bring indoor gardening inside their home. Why would you put it in a refrigerator? Well, because now we can control the environment. I see. That vegetation, humidity, the temperature. Temperature, you're not making lighting. It cold necessarily, but you're just making it consistent. Correct. And there's lighting, there's grow lighting. Exactly. Each individual shelf will dictate and operate its own temperature settings, nice. light source, nice. and irrigation system. Oh, that's great. So everything is individualized and controllable through the ThinQ app. So once you basically set all this up, you will have to program via the application, yeah. what is growing on each and every shelf. Okay, because again, the technology now, or the automation, takes over. So this is a concept? Correct. Will LG make this? Oh, absolutely. And when? Uh, we're looking, hopefully, to bring this to the U.S. market in 2021. I'm, I'll get one. It's a built-in, though, so it's going to be one of those expensive built-ins. Very systems. high luxury appliances. A luxury herb garden exactly. in your home. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. Pleasure, Leo. Thank, Thank you. you. So Delta is, of course, known as an airline, but they also are a, a pretty big industrial company, and they're showing exoskeletons here. This is kind of amazing. Pull the trigger and just really slow. With these various exoskeletons, a single human can lift hundreds of pounds with only one pound of force. This is something a baggage handler might use uh, at an airport. There's also a uh, much more elaborate exoskeleton that uh, you can use to do industrial repairs, lift things like engines, tires, uh, really empower a single individual to do uh, a tough, heavy lifting, uh, but the robot, the exoskeleton, is doing all the work. This is from Delta. Is there a heavy balance? I don't know where it is. Yeah, it's heavier. Yeah, let's get two suitcases. That's how I hold it. And I mean, it's true people can do this, but if you do this kind of lifting for very much time at all, you're going to injure your shoulder, your back. And really, what I'm doing is I'm doing that lift that most people can't do. Um, but I'm not straining my back. I'm not straining, you know, my arms, my shoulders. So. I'm very comfortable, and the robot's taking all its own weight plus the weight of whatever I'm lifting. So, you know, that's increased quality of life for people that have injuries, um, and you know, that's reduced costs for uh, for hospital bills because you don't have injuries, right? So that's that's a big big step for, for workers. So you can continue doing those tasks all day with the batteries on the the Guardian XO, get up for eight hours of operating life. 
Austin uses about four, about 500 watts on average when he's moving around and doing different tasks. So with those batteries, that set up to about eight hours of operating life. They're also just in two batteries, you can hot swap one, so in theory you never need to, never need to stop. Yeah, the price keeps going on like that. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to help us with the tire, otherwise yeah. you're going to get a lot of people in there. Yeah, that's true. We'll have to get three people on this tire, so it's me. So I'll go ahead and set this back down. And once again, it's just going to take a hot second. Do that. Another doctor, Sergei Pananin. Hello, Sergei. Hello. From Walnut, California, but originally from Russia. And this is, I think it's kind of cool. I always wanted an Apple One computer, right? But there were thousands of dollars. Now you get one for 99 bucks. Yeah. It's the same, it's like a complete, it's a ROM and everything, 6502, yeah. everything? Yeah, it's not like boxes inside it, just everything is displayed here like a new to secure like 6502. Real RAM, ROM and ROM with the Wozniak's original car. Not yeah. cool. Yeah, the Woz said, yeah guys. Woz well, well, said it's okay. Yeah, yeah. He said it's okay, ask him whether we can use it. And he said, yeah guys. I bet he loves this idea. Yeah. And, and, and so what, what age groups do you think this would be aimed at? Frankly, it's 12 plus, but also we have a lot of... Uh, a lot of dads who want to do it, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot of guys from, uh, from Silicon Valley who like... Uh, sure. Yeah, who work sure. here for companies like come this. with Apple Basic, or do I have to... Yeah. That's in the run. Yeah, that's in the run, yeah. Wow, that's so cool. How much? Uh, how much? Uh, how much? Uh, how much dollars? Uh, again, I mean like ninety nine bucks. Ninety nine bucks. Uh, can I get it now? Uh, no, it's on pre sale now. We have like pre orders on our website. So you're gonna just like Steve Jobs did. You're gonna yeah. get the orders. I the parts. Stuff like Jeff, you're, Steve Jobs, you're, you're gonna go in the garage. You're gonna put it yeah, all together. Yeah. Where did you get the designs for all these ships? Everything is absolutely original here, like a bidding part. Here's like we have two Arduinos for a video out of Arduino. Yeah, also because we wanted so it's an emulator for those only for video and keyboard. Yeah, uh, but uh, there is no any emulator for the computing part, the main part. So this is, is this an actual MOSFET 6502? Yeah. Yeah, it 6502, is. Yeah. Can you still get them? Yeah. Also, there is guy in uh, in Arizona, Bill Match, who was one of the creator of 6502, and they produce them now. Nice. So there are new 6502s. Yeah. And the RAM chips, of course, you can get plenty of those. It's, it's new ones, yeah. It's new ones because we didn't really want it to make it like one or one to one copy. Right. Because we wanted to re-engineer it uh, to make it kind of a, the best of two worlds, like the classic and the new technologies like Arduino. So. Did Waz look at it and say, oh, you could cut that chip out, cut that chip out, cut that chip out? No, we didn't look at the, yet, the details, but yeah, but the, the whole idea is to reduce the number of chips because, right. yeah. It was He's famous of, for that. Yeah. So that's great. So you're emulating video and keyboard. Yeah. Is there a disk drive, a, a disk driver in there? Is the WAS chip in there? Can you emulate that as well? Uh, no, there is no any storage right now. Uh, but we'll think about it. Maybe we would add this. And I could hook up a keyboard and monitor. Yeah, yeah. Hook up a keyboard here and the uh, output. You have lowercase or is it all uppercase? Uppercase, yeah. <laughs> Green screen. Yeah. Of course, it's got to yeah. be. I'm going to show what is inside the box. Yeah, will you? So here. Oh, that's beautiful. Nicely yeah. done. Everybody on this conference likes this. It's so pretty. Yeah, so really nice. Explain what it is like, like what it is all these gates, what it is 3D decoder, what's the, uh, and uh, how it's used in the whole system. Also, it's like, uh, here's like bags with components and breadboard. the breadboard. That's yeah. so great. Yeah. Oh, I think it's a great project for somebody to learn a lot about how computers work. Yeah. I love it. Thank hey, you. thank you, Sergey. Nice to meet you. Smartykit.io. We've gone down into the deep down into the basement of the Sands Expo Center, where the international booths are, and it feels it, it's kind of fun because it feels almost like a science fair down here with all kinds of crazy gizmos and gadgets. This one really caught my eye because their tagline is Fresco, the curry of olive oil. I'm talking to Dr. Frances, Fran, Francesco Sparafora. Are you a doctor? Are you a professor? I'm a doctor. You know, I'm an engineer. Uh, with, uh, with my colleague, uh, this, uh, this machine. At the university? Uh, yes, also. Also the university in uh, Calabria. Yeah. Uh, south of Italy. Great olive oil in Calabria. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we want, we want to export our uh, fantastic products maybe there. Right now you're selling this in Italy. Yes, right now just in Italy. 
uh, but so obviously we want to to expand our I want market. It. This is yeah, for sure. So it takes fresh olives. Exactly. We um, we. Uh, Take uh, the starting point is uh, the, the the creation of the pot. Uh, in particular, we use a technique of uh, uh, flesh freezing of the olive oil, uh, Italian extra virgin olive oil. Yeah. Um, with our technology, we create this pot of frozen oil. Yeah. We storage it um, inside of a bag yep. uh, to avoid also the oxidation. So, so this is better than if I buy in the can or a bottle. Because it's maybe, frozen. maybe, maybe, yes, could be, uh, could be. Um, for sure, it is fresh. Yeah, always, yeah. it's yeah. fresh. Always. Mm, it's um, fresh. <laughs> it's yeah. Consider that. Uh, oh, that's um, great. In after a few months, the, the the most of the quality of the taste of the oil should be brought yeah, down. Yeah. So you want it? You want it as fresh as possible. Yeah. Okay. For us, yes. So um, you put the pot in this device. It we squeezes it and exactly, it, makes, exactly. it gives you the olive oil as needed. Yeah, because the, the machine heats up the, the oil. That's, uh, yes, you have to maintain uh, the oil, uh, it's still frozen, yeah. sure. Yeah. You put it inside of the machine, and after a few minutes, you can you, the, the olive oil squeeze inside of the glass. So you can uh, you can enjoy Italian extra virgin olive really oil. really good. <laughs> Francesco, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Fresco, the Keurig of olive oil. Finally, I've been thank waiting you. for this. <laughs> thank, thank you. you.